Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Figma Fridays. I'm Peter Yoder. I am a product owner and founder of Rockstar Studios. And today I'll be going through animating transitions for prototypes in Figma. Today I'm gonna to go through two methods specifically. First, we're gonna go through Smart Animate and then I'll take a look at how to do keyframes and overlays and auto advance uh, to take advantage of it. One of the important notes here is I'm gonna be going through the functionality that's available right in Figma. If, so you won't have to be tying into other plugins or whatever else, and you'll be able to use these animations right in your prototypes. So let's get started. Let's take a look at um, what we're trying to do at the end of the day. So um, at the end of the day, we want to try to do an animation that, uh, that does a nice spiffy transition here on our prototype. So I click that, kind of comes in, it moves my icons a little bit, and there's a little click state that happens on when I uh, click it for the first time. So let's take a look at a couple ways to tackle this. First, let's take a look at Smart Animate. So Smart Animate uh, is a, a system item built in right by Figma. So if we take a look at this item here, um, I like to have this transition to this. Uh, First way to do it, if I take this guy right here and I make a copy, um, I can take this this layer right here, and I can make this layer um, basically just move down and off the screen. So when I move that layer down and off the screen, um, which is essentially what I did over here, it's down off the screen, um, and hiding behind that, I can then take this item and say, well, let's let's take a look at this button here. Let's see what it does. All right, so I'm gonna grab that, this guy right here. I'm gonna go into prototype mode and I'm gonna connect them over here. So I'll, I'll delete this connection so you can see how to do that. If I take this plus button and I drag it over to here, it's gonna pull up my options for uh, what I wanna do. So on that button right there, when I drag that over, uh, I want it to navigate to this other screen that has this up. And because I kind of pushed that little guy down behind, um, I'm gonna put Smart Animate, and then I'm gonna say Ease In. So think of ease like acceleration. So easing in means that I'm gonna start real slow and I'm gonna speed up. So I'm easing in and speeding up as I go. So it feels a little more natural, um, because usually there's like, in the real world, there's inertia. Things don't just suddenly go to top speed. Uh, they have to kind of build speed. And so ease in helps us do that. Also notice the milliseconds here. Um, a good, good note to think of it is um, a thousand milliseconds is a second. So if you want half a second, it's 500 milliseconds. So I'm gonna do about 500 milliseconds. And it's good to note that, you know, simple transitions typically are somewhere around um, 150 to 250 milliseconds. Um, if you're doing more complex um, transitions, kind of like we showed at the beginning, uh, you can do a whole second on it. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, you want to kind of gauge that and feel it out and, and see what feels nice. So I've got on tap here. So when I tap that button, it'll navigate to that item and it will smart animate with an ease in for 500 milliseconds. So let's take a look at how this looks. And I'm going to close out this other prototype here. And I'm going to take a look at this prototype on this particular tab. All right, so this particular one is the simplest way to do it and the fastest way to do it. So if I clicked on this plus button, it's going to animate that in. So let's just take a look at that. Fairly simple. It What Smart Animate is doing is it's taking a look at, oh, okay, so you want that end state and you want that start state. And it's taking that um, out from being tucked in behind this bar here and it's pulling it up. And it's also, if you notice on this little guy, it's turning it when I click on it. Uh, so Smart Animate actually can do a lot of things and it's a very quick way if you just wanna illustrate something quickly. Well, we wanna try to do something a little more ambitious. So um, we're gonna take advantage of a couple other things. So let's take a look at um, doing a more keyframe specific animation. 
So let's take a look at this. So um, some of the things I want to knock out with this are, let's see if we can get like a ripple effect going. So when I click on it, little like ripples come out from a button. Um, I want to make these little icons shift a little. Um, and then I'm going to make this button kind of rotate in like you saw at the beginning. So if I go up here, um, we talked about complex animations being one second long. So I'm going to make this one second long. Um, and, and some, uh, just some knowledge that helps as you're doing this. Uh, GIFs typically are between 15 and 24 frames per second. If you ever go to like old film movies, they were typically, or I guess uh, not even old film movies, but typically 24 frames per second is what we've gotten used to seeing on film. GIFs can get away with be being a little bit shorter. Um, I'm going to go for 16 frames here. So, um, so here I've made keyframes. I've made, as you can see, 15 and then a final keyframe here. Um, and I've basically done that by copying these over and changing things in them. So 16 frames. And if I divide a thousand by 16, I get around 62.5 milliseconds. So that'll come into play here a second as I show you. Uh, so it starts out like, like normal. Um, I would have my screen that I start on, but the first step that you, that uh, to kind of look at is the way we're going to structure this is a little bit different. We're going to use overlays. So here I've got uh, this guy right here. I'm going to go in and, and select this object that I want to animate. And if you notice here, I set it to untap like before, but I've actually set it to open an overlay. So opening this overlay will basically make this guy um, open up. And the other key here, really important here, is make sure you've set this down to manual. Um, what it does when you set something to manual is it gives you the chance to position this where it needs to be on the screen. So if I put it here, if I, if I tapped on that button, it's gonna pop up in the middle of my screen. So I'm gonna position this right at the bottom here. Let's take a look. Make sure that it's lined up so it's nice and neat. All right, so when I click on that button, it should make this guy pop over top of this. Um, and then now I'm gonna to go to my first frame. So um, now that I've done an overlay, I'm going to work on what I do next. So really what I'm doing is I'm setting a series of delays. So first, first frame that comes in of the 16 frames is gonna be my little ripple effect starting. And the second frame, it's going to be getting a little bigger. Third frame, it's going to start fading out. Um, and then I'm going to start um, having this guy turn and turn a little bit. And then, oh, now I'm seeing the button fan in little by little. And if you notice, it's, it's getting faster. So I, this is kind of slow, tiny bit, and now it's speeding up, now it's speeding up. I'm actually doing ease in. Um, in a way, I'm calculating, okay, if I start here, it's 180 degrees off, and then I, I shift it to 168 and 153, I'm actually speeding up the angle, the amount of degrees that I pass as I get closer, so that it feels like it's moving faster as it gets to the final one here. And then, so let's take a look at that a little closer. Uh, what is going on under the hood here? So I set this to after delay, and remember we talked about 16 frames at around 62. I did 63 milliseconds because you can't do points in Figma, but that works. And then I do a swap with. So I do swap with frame two. And what it does is it takes that overlay that was over top of here and it says, okay, swap it out to that one. And then this one says, oh, swap it out to that one. So I'm setting it up to essentially automatically advance across these frames at approximately 16 frames a second. Um, and then I make my my animation instant because I don't want uh, it applying any specific effects to it. Uh, and then I, and that's how I do it. I'm laying all those specific items out. And then when you get to the final one over here, let's take a look at this frame. Um, I actually have this last delay uh, be slightly different. I have it navigate to a full screen here. And the reason I do that is so that I'm 
I'm back at a screen and I'm not on overlays anymore. So it kind of gives you, gets you back to square one. Uh, and then if you want to get really fancy, you then say, okay, well, I want to go back. You know, I want to ease back, you know, have this guy go away when I click on the button um, and then get me back to square one, which then takes me all the way back to the beginning. Here. So with those items applied, Let's go look at that one more time. I'm going to play my prototype here. And as it loads in, I'm going to say, okay, let's push the plus button. Uh, keep an eye over here on the ripple effect. See how it kind of rippled in and then it goes back out, rippled in. And that is uh, how you do a little more advanced keyframe based animation in Figma. And uh, unlike prototypes, which don't really work, or unlike uh, plugins, which don't really work here in prototype mode, um, this is how you can get some of those cooler animations uh, done. Um, so that's our super easy lesson on how to do uh, animations in Figma without plugins. Uh, if this was helpful to you, please leave a like down at the bottom and or subscribe to us to see more content uh, like this on Figma. And uh, of course, if you have any comments or ideas or uh, want to post kind of what you did using these kind of techniques, feel free to uh, let us know in the information below. Uh, until next time, this has been Peter uh, for Figma Friday.